It's important that we be able to pass in properties with our struct components just as well as we would pass in properties in our functional components. Um, and it's, it's similar to, but there's a difference in how we're going to uh, consume and like actually access the properties. Uh, now, right now, if we were to go through and click on the properties section of the documentation, it unfortunately just tells you how to create the property object, which we've already done um, with, with the other um, uh, functional, uh, functional component property lessons. So up here, if uh, it doesn't necessarily show us exactly how we're going to access the properties, um, it just shows that we have this type properties equals some kind of type. Uh, right now, they have a, a props um, struct which doesn't have anything in it, so it's not really real properties here. But the general idea remains, and I think this is what we're going to use. We're going to create a struct. We're going to assign the type, and then we can access that through the context. Uh, if we go down to the context section here, it doesn't really have much, but it does uh, does say this. Uh, this object, the context, uh, provides a reference to component scope, which allows sending messages to a component, and the props passed to the component. So that's the key there. Let's go ahead and uh, and see if we can implement this. So I want to change this so that we're instead of the message coming through the struct and just being in the state, we're going to send that hello world message through a property. So let's first create a property up here. So we're going to do pub uh, struct um, props uh, do a pub message and make you a string. And uh, we do need to derive uh, properties uh, and partial equal. Okay, that makes you happy. Um, now, we're going to take you out of here. So we only have the message on props, which means we don't need that when we create the, uh, the struct either. But we do need to set that this properties is now equal to this props. So we've now set what that type is. Now, we can't access it via self anymore. Now it's going to be part of this CTX. Now, if you can't stand just CTX and you want to just call this context, uh, you can just rename that. That's perfectly fine. Um, the rest will, will allow that. So then we're now going to do context.props. Um, it's a method which now should return back an instance of this props. So then we want to do dot message. Um, it is giving us this reference to the properties. So I don't need to give it another reference out of here because I can't take ownership of, of this message. So, okay. Um, now our library is yelling at us because we need to actually give the message um, as a property in. So message equals hello from uh, the lib. So we're going to go ahead and save it. Oh, it needs to be a string here. Oh, and you, 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 let's see, we're going to do two owned. And then also we're going to wrap this in the curly brackets. So it actually runs. Um, okay, now it actually is yelling us about moving out. Well, fine, then I'm going to reference you. Uh, okay, that's uh, often what happens in this type of development is you get an error and that causes other errors not to show up until you fix them. And then you just sort of like fix the errors until nothing is left. Everything is fine. It has compiled. We're going to come back and take a look at our code. And now we see this hello from live.rs. So let's review really quickly. Um, to create the properties, just like the functional component properties, we create a properties struct and we make sure that we derive properties and partial equal on it. 
Uh, what is different here is that for our impl component, we then set the type properties equal to be that struct. Um, and then accessing it, we have to run the props method on the context that's passed into the view method for ourselves. That returns back this, uh, this property structure, which then we can access um, its properties on and uh, then display them or use them or whatever we need to do, we have access to them. And because we have a context here in view and in create, we can also utilize properties here if we want to do anything to them at this point in time. Anyways, hopefully that was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.